Welcome to Buzz in the Tower, a podcast dedicated to the movies of the 1980s and the 1990s. I'm your host, Mo Shapiro. Recovering from the wedding of Max Sanders, I am not joined by Max Sanders because he's abandoned the show and he's on a honeymoon or I don't know what he's doing. Costar, did he even tell us what he was going to be doing? I have no clue. We should be concerned. So disrespectful. But replacing him, hopefully permanently, but at least for today, I give you Bruce Amwake. On the Happy high, to on be the here, highest. Mo. There he is. Thank you. We get a nice, nice little uh, graphic underneath there. Something like the Spruce Moose or Bruce or Eugene. I'll call him Eugene sometimes. Bruce, this is your second trip to the show. First time on video. I know you're nervous, but we gave you a ton of amphetamine, so I think you're going to be ready to rock and roll today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So uh, today we're going to talk about Terminator 2 for two reasons. Uh, one, that Bruce happened to actually pick this topic, and two... That I knew it would piss Max off because it's one of his favorite movies. So Sorry, Max. No, don't apologize, please. He doesn't deserve your apologies. Before we do any of that, a couple reminders. You can listen to the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcast, any podcast player that's out there. Follow, subscribe, review, rate, all that fun jazz. At Buzz in the Tower, B-U-Z-Z-N, the towers, our call sign on all social media platforms. TikTok and Instagram are the big ones. TikTok in particular, that's where you can get all of our viral videos, viral videos, Mowage. 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 Pentas Batakop. And then buzzinthetower.com if you're looking for a beautiful t-shirt to wear this summer or something to impress the ladies or gentlemen or whatever's in between, swing by our shop <laughs> and purchase a shirt or whatever you like. And then patreon.com is where you can really support the show. Uh, we are listener supported. Patreon.com slash buzzinthetower. With all of that fun stuff being said, oh, and... 80stees.com is our sponsor. Now, Bruce's shirt is not from 80stees.com, but 80stees.com does have that shirt, so it worked out perfectly. I didn't want to false represent. Please swing by, pick up any type of shirt to represent your favorite memories from movies, music, video games, you name it, from the 80s and the 90s. They've got what you need. Like I said, we're talking about Terminator 2, but I would be doing a disservice to our listeners if I didn't talk about Max's wedding last night, which near killed me. If I, if I sound different yeah, I'm to looking you, forward to this. I'm exhausted. So... I am an ordained minister. You know this. I I was counting the numbers. I think I've done almost 20 weddings, which is wild. I thought it was more than that, actually. But oh, my That's gosh, still yeah. pretty impressive. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so last night was interfaith. Not that Selena and Max are particularly religious, but both family backgrounds, right. interfaith. Right. And uh, it was an eclectic mix of people because you have, like, Max's family, you have Selena's family, and then, as you know, in the service industry, you have the service industry family. Oh, yeah. So just bartenders, waitresses, bouncers, cooks, like, the whole shebang. It was like uh, it was like the Muppets take Manhattan. It was absolutely right. wild. Yeah, they're easy to spot. Yeah. I and so I get up there, and I I, uh, I start, you know, we, she walked down the aisle. Selena looked incredible. Max outpunted his coverage when he <laughs> when he married her. Like, like, and Max looked great. Max is in his talks and everything, but Selena looked like, you know, Bridal Magazine, the cover, nice. just absolutely beautiful. And um, I got time. On the show, I often joke about how Max's father, Max's father is what all of us would want to have as a father, like literally a man who just wants to hold his son in his arms and protect him. And I joke about how if, nice. he, if he could produce Very milk, nice. he would be feeding from his breast. <laughs> I have talked and FaceTimed with Max's family before, like throughout the years, but I, this is the first time I actually went face to face with all of them. And like, oh, wow. He was just like, it's a big night for you, too. He, oh, he was glowing yeah, with I just bet. like pride. It was really yeah, cute. The that's whole thing cool. was great. Selena's dad and mom were fantastic. Stepdads, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, nice. bridesmaids, they're all great. So I get up there and I start going through the spiel, you know, welcome, et cetera, et cetera. I start off by saying, Max and Selena insisted that the only thing that I make sure I do during this ceremony is to tell you to please follow and subscribe at our podcast at Buzz nice. in the Tower. And everybody like totally lost it and they were cracking up. Um, but like it was really cool meeting all these different people who listen to the podcast and they heard my voice. They're like, oh, I know this is this is Mo. But obviously I go by a few other names as well. And then I ran into a bunch of people I used to bartend with back in the day. And the reason I sound like crap right now is I got suckered into going to scorekeepers after the wedding and somehow ended up wearing a bartending shirt, got behind the bar, and made a few drinks for people. And now Did you I feel – did it take you back? Was, I, it, was it 98 all over again? I was ready to get divorced and abandon my family. Oh, I was like, well. this is like the most fun thing. I know – I told – I promised if I was going to do it, it would be with you, so I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm kidding, I, Trish. Yeah. I'm kidding. Don't worry. Yeah. Trish doesn't listen to the podcast. You're yeah. safe. Where's Trish? So it was, was a good time saying, overall. It was a ton of fun. It was a beautiful yeah. wedding. The the food, the atmosphere was very decadent, very high-end, top-shelf stuff. That's how Max is. So as a result, Max is gone today, 
Wednesday, so I've got you, you today and Wednesday I do. So, yeah. well, we'll see how today goes. We could always oh, just do it by myself. Yeah. I don't want to over yeah. overcommit. All right, Max. No, oh, you're not Max. You're Bruce. Wow. That's a little... No. Oh. It's weird. I'm sorry. You can call me whatever you want. Can I call you Al? Yes. You know, I used to think the title of that song was Call Me Alf because it was... Because he's Mel Mackian? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Gordon Shumway with the lyrics. That's a... Mmm, diddly diddly then. <laughs> <laughs> So let me jump into this because uh, I think there's a lot of fun things to talk about in this movie. And I have a couple questions that I teed up in my head because I think one of the things that that I love doing with you, you have you and Max, the one thing you have in common, really the only thing because he's a whole different animal. But the one thing you guys share in common is you have an encyclopedia Britannica like recall. I'm not saying you remember every single quote. I'm not saying you remember every single character. I have my moments. But you, you have a very large catalog in your mind of films like you've watched a lot of movies um yes, and this is true fair. true of sports too right if i want to talk to you about like who's the greatest kicker of the 90s you'll all of a sudden start <laughs> I put you on the spot but um you'll you'll pull the name so i was thinking about this there is a classic conversation about how sequels are real difficult right oh, of course trilogy yeah. sequels like especially when you come out the gate with something special there there are a few there's a mount rushmore of sequels that were better than the originals. The first one that comes to mind, The Empire Strikes Back and Godfather 2. Those are the first two that people I'll, I'll give you the former. Yeah. I I'm a, I'm a I'm a Godfather. Okay. Godfather 2, yeah. but I, but you're not that's a lot of people feel that way. Right. Yeah. So I would even say it's a fun conversation to have it's close because the the most of the time it's not close. It's it's really a solid totally. drop no, off. No, 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 right? that point well taken. Absolutely. And what I found really interesting is when you go through the list, you do a quick Google search like greatest sequels greatest follow-up films, a lot of them are sci-fi. And I'm starting to wonder if in in the science fiction genre, if it lends itself more to having success on the second than it does in other genres. That's, I mean, maybe that has something to do with the uh, technology, the effects getting improving over time, it, something it, like that. A hundred percent. And I, I also think that it's when you have, so we'll talk specifically about Terminator for a second, right? So the first Terminator movie is made with a budget of roughly, let's see here, $8.4 million. The first one? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So it doesn't feel that way. It doesn't <laughs> well, feel like it. Right. It, but it, I'm it, also it, having a number in mind about what the, the second one is. Yeah, was, yeah. yeah. But the first one, it, I'm not making the claim. It was not an indie film. It has a grit indie it does film have, yes. feel and to it. It's a great way to put it, Mo, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I wonder if part of why you get these wonderful experiences sometimes more often in sci-fi is because to your earlier point about the technology, if you knock it out of the park as a sci-fi horror film, I, I mean, I, I know the debate of whether or not it's more of a horror film than sci-fi, but let's just talk about sci-fi. If you, if you knock it out of the park on a sci-fi film, not only are you going to get enough money to do some pretty wild stuff, do you get emboldened a little bit to take bigger risks with story changes and everything else because it lends yeah. itself more to that in the genre that, yeah. than just a, a, a standard Lethal Weapon Two was going to be Lethal Weapon One with a bigger budget and but it's you're still getting a saxophone yeah. and you're still getting I'm getting too old for this you know like yeah. it, it's still there <laughs> the departure from you're taking the main character who is the bad guy and you're flipping him to the good guy that is a very big and bold change bold because it, it's there's meta reasons as to why it was done because Schwarzenegger was such a big star. People wanted to see him as a good guy. Um, it, 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 they basically made that huge decision or bold decision, as you put it, based on the fact that biggest movie star in the world. Right, right. <laughs> so this is to that point. He made 75K for the first one and he made 15 million for the second one. Which I heard he accepted in a private jet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then, and, 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 and just well, matter of fact, and to, your, and, to your, and to your budget point, 8.4 million for the first one. Somewhere between ninety four to one hundred million for the second one, <laughs> of which a a, a a disproportionate chunk of that was paying Schwarzenegger right. the fifteen million right. salary. Yeah, I also think what's interesting, and I'm going to give you the list of some of the other movies that came up. Sci fi does this, I think, again more than other films do. the The departure from what Terminator One is to Terminator Two, they're not, they're different movies. Yes. Like very different movies. Yes, and for uh, a, a laundry list of reasons. Right. Too. Yeah. So here's some that uh, when you again, I I just I kept it to sci-fi, and I I just kind of did a Google search on best sci-fi sequels that are better than the first. These are the ones that came up. Although some of these I argue whether they be sci-fi or not, but whatever. Sure. Some I don't. Empire Strikes Back, obviously. Yeah. Have you watched? 
Have you seen the old, the original Dune, and have you seen the two new Dunes? I have only seen the first new one. Okay, believe it or not. Okay, <laughs> that is that's interesting. the 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 second one's in crowd. It, it's it is a that's what I'm hearing. It is a New Hope Empire Strikes Back conversation. Interesting. It okay. is really 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 good. Cool. Uh, and, and so I would highly recommend seeing it. Um, Alien and Aliens. Yeah, that's a lot of people love the sequel more. And, and I sure. would and I would draw a genuine comparison between the feel and the grit and the evolution between Terminator to Terminator 2 from Alien yeah, and there, Aliens. Yeah, it, it feels like a parallel it, Yeah, when it, you bring it up it, like that. It really, yeah. And it also feels like it went from late 70s, you know, action, but with like like more yeah. heart yes. to like 90s, 80s action film, right? Yeah. Like Terminator 2 and Aliens are like, you know, it, get, it, get your it, gun and shoot it, it up. It stepped into that proverbial 80s aesthetic. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah it, just a totally different vibe altogether. Back to the Future 2. Now I I will all contend Back to the Future One is the most perfect film ever made, and I like and it more than two. Best screenplays yeah. of all time. Yeah. But but some people say Back to the Future Two is better. Either way, kind of I wouldn't say two different films, but an example of one that people argue: Mad Max Two versus Mad Max One. Mad not the new ones, but the I original gotcha. one. Yeah. yeah, but like that's it's, a, road, that, it's known as the Road Warrior. And, here. and this yeah. is another example of like indie Australian film, Australian actor, like right. low budget, and then all of a sudden it worked, and well, now, you got, was, now you got Tina Turner. You know. Well, the, that she's in the third one, uh, oh, Thunderdome, yes, but not, right. I'm not stepping. No, no, on either, you're right. You're right. So the first one is basically a cop revenge movie. Yeah, got cop's family gets killed. He's out to get his, you know, what's his. Second one is kind of when it, it started to co- take the whole what we know as Mad Max to be today. Post apocalyptic. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's good. I like. Uh, yeah, I like yeah, it too. But yeah. uh, this was a great one, and I totally agree. Uh, Star Trek Two: Wrath of Khan. So I'm not a Trekkie. I haven't seen those. I apologize. No, but, don't apologize. I'm not a Trekkie. Wrath of Khan will get you into being I've, a Trekkie. I've heard this over a dozen times. Yeah. People talk about yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. It's, so, it's, it's just like, yeah. I don't know, man. There's something wild about it. I mean, the, the campiness of Star Trek exists in, in that iteration, but it's like, it's, it's, I don't know. It's an exciting Is one. Is Ricardo Montalban in Absolutely. That? Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's no Deplane boss, but other than that, like, he is, he's <laughs> ready to rock. <laughs> That's so good. Um, the Matrix Reloaded. I disagree wholeheartedly. The, the, the OG, I, I don't mean to, you love the OG. The, I mean, yeah. it doesn't even the first compare. One's it doesn't compare. Yeah, it's so I, good. I mean, I, I actually I forgive the sequels because of how good, how good the, first the first one is. One is. Yeah. I, I'm with you. I, I don't think this is sci-fi, but if we stretch our imagination a little bit, The Dark Knight, sure, Batman Returns, The sure. Dark Knight, sure. Now, if you if you just take that away and just talk about sequels being better than the first. The Dark Knight's the best of all of them. Yeah, I, I mean, I, and I love Batman. Be- By the way, that's not a slight on Batman. Be- Batman Begins, oh, which I think was yeah. wonderfully done. I think it's a it's a well organized trilogy. Yeah. I, every movie stands on its own, and uh, ha- there, therefore just has its own vibe. Yeah. Res- you know, respectively. So it's it's cool. It is absolutely. But now you get to Terminator, right? And so Rook, it is sci fi. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. The Dark Knight. I mean, if it was made in the fifties, it'd be sci fi. Right? Superhero genre didn't exist. It's I, now, now just pigeonholed. I, so. I don't disagree. So, as yeah. a as a for those of you who've not had the wonderful opportunity to see Terminator Two, quick synopsis: Terminator Two, Judgment Day. Uh, in this sequel, set eleven years after the original Terminator, young John Connor, played by Edward Furlong, the key to civilization's victory over a future robot uprising, is a target of a shape shifting T one thousand, played by Robert Patrick, a Terminator sent from the future to kill him. Another Terminator, the revamped T-800, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, has been sent back to protect the boy. As John and his mother, played by Linda Hamilton, go on the run with the T-800, the boy forms an unexpected bomb with bond with the robot. They went out of their way to keep the role of Schwarzenegger ambiguous. You didn't know that he was going to be the good guy. But for the marketing, absolutely. Right, yes. right. Yeah. And, um, so they, and then, obviously, opening weekend – it spread like wildfire. I mean, yeah. again, putting yourself in the time, you're talking about, God, what year was this? 91. Uh, 91. So it's not like, you know, you have to, AOL Instant Messenger wasn't even out yet, right? So like, it's not like people could be <laughs> right. pushing this information. So you didn't know. And you go in there and there are so many things about this movie that are incredible. I almost feel like you talk about it in two different boxes. Like box number one is the special effects. The special effects changed everything. Right. Like Cameron had all these ideas of stuff that he wanted to do when he was filming Terminator 1, the technology wasn't where his imagination was. And then he gets to Terminator 2, and he's like, let's do these things. And it's some pretty wild stuff, and it's some pretty basic stuff, too. It's not like – I don't see this movie as being over-CGI'd. It doesn't feel – Totally. It was – it's form – he he prioritized what it would do for the film as opposed to I'm just going to do it because I can. Yeah. Um, 
So you know I love the comedian Bill Hicks. I do. The late great. Yep. He had a, a joke that is, uh, for the record, the only funny Chuck Norris joke of all time. Oh, you love Chuck Norris jokes. Oh, they're, they're <laughs> not good. But uh, so um, he's, he, uh, he had this joke in 1992 that you start, <clears throat> movie studios should start using terminally ill patients as stunt people. And <laughs> <laughs> go on. <laughs> And and it, the the reason he was telling this joke is because he had just seen Terminator Two, and he says that if you use them, do you want your grandma to let, die out in a an old folks home, or do you want her to meet Chuck Norris and <laughs> gets her head kicked off? <laughs> just a quick aside, sorry. No, that's good. Um, that's not making the final cut. <laughs> no, are you kidding? As I should have mentioned the show's very different now. We leave a lot more out instead of uh, in, or a lot more in instead of out. Excuse me. Oh, good to know. Yeah, no, I should have again told you that earlier. Um, it. The the so the the boxes I'm putting it in right so the one box is the special effects piece of it, the second is time travel as a genre of film has been around for a very very long time, and it's had different iterations all the way from hot tub time machine to Back to the Future. Wizard, to, I'd say Wizard of Oz counts as a time travel. Yeah, I'm not a little actually, bit. I'm not I mean, to that yeah, it, in a way. I'll yeah. I'll even let's squish it. Parallel universe travel, time travel, sure, all this kind sure, of like sure. leaving your reality and yeah. going to another reality. The spin on this and the the butterfly effectness of this, yeah, that like can yeah. one thing it, to be able to have an action film that has incredible special effects and it's like gripping, and then also this is why I love Back to the Future, by the way, that as you're watching this like fun comedy action like tech movie. They're also bringing up these incredible, like the chalkboard flip when Doc is saying, if you go back on this line and then this line goes to here, so we have to go back and get the almanac back in this, da, da, da. Like to me, that you're that you're forced to also think while you're watching the film is a fascinating way to approach watching a movie. So in this movie, the idea that he's coming back, he's been sent by John Connor to come back, and he's protecting John Connor because the original attempt to kill his mother, Sarah Connor, didn't work. And and the time travel aspect of it and that things are fluid and that the T-800 can yeah. be reprogrammed yes. to be a part of that. I, I just think that's like a very – the story part, right? So story – that look, the acting at the end of the day, there's only a handful of roles of real acting in this. Schwarzenegger in the first Terminator, I believe – don't quote me on this fact, but I'm pretty sure. I think oh, the late, great O.J. Simpson was up for the role of the Terminator. He, I believe he was, yeah. And I think Schwarzenegger met with Cameron – because they wanted him to play Kyle Reese. And I think he was talking to Cameron and he said, look, he's like, if, the, if the Mr. OJ happened to get this role, you have to tell him he has to has to be emotionless. He has to act as a robot. He cannot show expression. The and, he's, and Schwarzenegger is giving all these notes on what will make the perfect Including Terminator. Including assembling the, his, his guns without looking at it. Yep. Yeah, which yep. I thought, which, which is a great it's tip. It's brilliant. Yeah. I, I, people underestimate the acting and comedic and general brilliance of Schwarzenegger because he's a goofy, muscular guy. <laughs> right. But, like, as he did with his body and training, he created a level of, like, professionalism and perfectionist with his work where he really thought about this stuff. And his right. his his feedback to Cameron was so powerful that Cameron's like, you, you got to be the Terminator. And, 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 again, I know we're not talking about Terminator 1, it's a risky play to be the bad guy when mm -hmm. you're ascending as an action and superhero to say, okay, put me in this horror film, this right. horror sci-fi yeah. film as yeah. the bad guy and give me, you know, 20 lines, 15 lines, I think. Mm -hmm. I think in this movie it jumped to like 100, maybe 200 Probably. lines. Yeah, he was more conversational for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so Furlong, who played a young John Connor, turned out to be incredibly well-suited for this job. As it turned out, he had ran away from home and was actually living with his aunt and uncle. So there was this like really? kind of parallel yeah. to now th this film took quite a bit, a uh, long time to shoot and he was going through like growth spurts during it. It's always tricky when you have kids because right. like, you know, I mean, you see my kids, you'll blink and all of a sudden they're like a foot taller. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, so that worked out well. And uh, he actually completely blew the first audition because I guess he was like super shy and he was mm -hmm. uh, doing a, Sound test or not sound test, a uh, screen test with uh, Sarah Con Linda Hamilton, <laughs> uh, Sarah Connor, um, and and they the casting director was just sure he was the right person, so brought him back and okay. he was able to get more comfortable and do it again. Oh, good thing. Yeah, um, I've got a handful of just I'll kind of rip through and stop me while I'm doing this if you have anything tangential to it. But I, I've got a cool, couple cool facts about the movie. Sure. The liquid metal robot um, from the future that could disguise himself as objects, like you know the sidewalks. This idea for the T one thousand. 
uh, this was supposed to be the original villain for the Terminator. The idea got abandoned because in the 80s, I mentioned they didn't have the technology right. to do it. So this was something that Cameron was like really excited to do. Also interesting is that he had no idea how would he achieve it, but also he stayed away from it because John Carpenter was making the thing and he was worried that his ideas would be too similar to what John Carpenter was doing. Wow. Which, by the way, I, a professional respect. The thing is so good. Oh, yeah. I, that's a, that's a, I feel like that's a movie that people know of, but not enough people go back and watch and really appreciate that you're sitting there just yeah. like white knuckled. It's a, it's a mystery thriller. It's just like, it's, it's so many things. Oh, yeah. And it's then good. it's, it's obviously, uh, Groundbreaking with its special effects, yeah. too. So, yeah, it probably was a good call by Cameron, yeah. quite frankly. Have you ever, uh, I don't know if you know this now, but like John Carpenter, like in addition to directing and writing these films, also would do the music for these films. Yes, oh, I did know that. Yeah. Is, dude, Halloween score. Yeah. yeah. Well, Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah. Like that, like, yeah. I, like, and all that music is very, like, it's like Asian influence. Like, yeah, he's, he's, he, he used so to talented. tour with his son. Uh, in a band. You're just kidding. An instrumental band. Oh, that's yeah. so cool. <laughs> Dude, I saw some video of Keanu Reeves' band covering some song from The Cure. He plays bass in that band. Dogtooth or something? Yeah, like, something like that. Yeah, we, yeah. If they were ever around, I would totally go I'd see go. them. That'd oh, be yeah. so much fun. Yeah. You, uh, all the fanboys and girls on I'd be wearing my. I'd, stage, I would totally, yeah. I'd be wearing my uh, Give Me Two Utah shirt. It'd be great. It'd be fantastic. You have a, you have a Give Me Two? Yeah, I think so. No, no, I don't. You, there's no way you do. I have a th No, you know what my shirt is, says? You know what my shirt says? The name's Johnny Utah. It doesn't say give me okay, two. Okay. I was I was like, there's no way you wouldn't have you I would have left that out of I mean of our conversations. We talk four times a week on the phone. Let's not tell everybody our secrets. Oh, sorry. It's four times a day, by the way. Yes. Industrial light and magic. The team estimates estimates. And I thought this was to give you the the specter of growth in the film. Like we talked about this budget and everything changing. So the eight point four million dollars that it cost to shoot Terminator One is how much it cost just to do the beginning graphic of the atomic bomb going off and frying all of Los Angeles. You're kidding me. They used eight million the entire budget of the first movie just to do the beginning effect for Terminator. I guess, I mean that seems like a lot, but I guess I could see how Cameron would justify that because it kind of. It lays the, the well, yeah. It, it lays it, yeah. the consequences yeah. uh, for the for everybody's actions. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, I I, I get it because get like it. <laughs> you, it, you know, it's um, the the Spielberg approach and the Cameron approach, right? So Spielberg doesn't need to show you that like he it, he'll do the jaws, he'll tease you. It's a little change in music, a little splash in the water, right? A dorsal fin, yes. a couple teeth, and then the reveal. Cameron wants you, yeah, 40 minutes. Whatever, Cameron yeah. wants you like six minutes into the movie to know that you're <laughs> at the top of the roller coaster yeah. and like hold on. Yeah. And I love that they're yes. dynamically different approaches. That it's fun. Yeah. It, you know, it, 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 yeah, they're both masters of their craft and mm -hmm. it's, yeah, but for totally different reasons. Absolutely. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the other thing that I thought was really interesting, and again, I don't know how much of this, I shouldn't say I don't know if this is true or not, but. There's these little things that you won't notice until you hear these types of facts, and then you go back and watch it, and it kind of just is crazy to me. So um, Robert Patrick, uh, they they went with him to play the T-1000. Mm -hmm. Do you know who they were considering heavily prior to him but ended up getting in an accident and broke his leg and couldn't do it? I have no idea. Can it's, I guess? It's, just it's, uh, guess. I want you to guess because it's wild what the answer Burt is. Burt Reynolds. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> uh, Turd Ferguson. Yeah. Uh, Billy Idol. That's wild. That's wild. I have such a hard time wrapping my head around that. I would love to. see I shouldn't that movie. though, because the original Dune. If you watch Sting in it, it's like <laughs> it's an example of kind of like. But Billy Idol. Well, speaking of parallel universes, I I want to go to the one where Billy Idol plays the T one thousand. Yeah, that'd be amazing. I, right? Yeah. He I mean, I guess. I, I mean, I'm, I'm also when I think of Billy Idol now, I immediately think of Wedding Singer, which is the episode right. we just did. Okay. So I'm like, a, I'm, I'm yeah. I have like a goofier version. No, for, but like he's always goofy. I know, right? It's wonderful, a white wedding. It's a nice hilarious, day man. for. Uh, no, I had no, I've never heard that ever in my I, life. That's I, amazing. It was, it was a crazy. I, I dig up the crazy facts, especially with Max. Max is usually really good at unearthing. St well, to be fair, I don't fact check them, so he could be making all that right, up. Right. He has right. absolutely no moral compass, so right. I don't trust him. But you never know. Um, the uh, Quentin Tarantino's my cousin, Mo. Yeah, you I know, know right? Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised. Why is he on the show, Max? Then where's the bull, Bart? Where's the bull? <laughs> So in that opening scene that they spent all that money on, uh, Los Angeles had to be destroyed in model form. So the team building the models found that cornflakes, crackers, and shredded wheat were the perfect size for various elements of the structures, including the broken masonry. So wow. all that scaled down, and uh, yeah, it's just. I wonder how many things they went through to land on those particular. Uh, what a cool job! 
Well, yeah. Right? Like, I just playing around yeah. with different, like, textiles. Well, and... Toothpicks and matches tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, See, 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 see. So, I told you uh, Patrick played um, the T-1000. So, mm-hmm. he was being interviewed, and he decided with Cameron, again, they're working on ways to really kind of, like, invent the 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 machine. So, you you buy into it. Because his, right. his, it's, an, look my pantheon of just incredible actors like weekend at bernie's <laughs> bernie lomax <laughs> now look this is absurd because it's an absurd movie but when you really think about it that it, it, it's it's chaplin-esque what he does like he he essentially is a non-moving body and yeah, you're like I know, and I you're thought and, of that but and, yeah but like yeah. it's it's actually kind of incredible it, it's it's the stunts and the set pieces in that movie are hilarious and and just the way it's shot and like they're, he, they're, he's kissing the girl on the beach and then Bernie's body just slides up <laughs> on the water and the comedic timing and, and so we take for granted that it's it's hard to be funny period end of sentence yeah it's even harder to be funny when you are dealing with an inanimate object, right? Yeah, like yeah. it's not like they can smile and joke and laugh. So to me, when you play those kind of roles, take the funny aside. Now you're talking about like really driving fear into someone, right? Like mm-hmm. that T1000 was terrifying, terrifying, and he was barely saying anything. You talked about Schwarzenegger's limited di- limited dialogue yeah. in the first Terminator. Yeah, I mean it's probably less for. Yeah. Have you for- seen this boy? Yeah, that's about it. I, yeah, I, I don't even remember because if he was talking, it was typically he had morphed into another character, right, right, and so right, it wasn't right. even him. So here's what he did, which I thought was so cool. So first of all, when he runs, if you go back and watch it, he won't blink. Oh no, kidding! And that actually is kind of terrifying. Like we take for granted the physical and social cues when we right. interact with people. Yeah, but if someone stops blinking, it is a little bit jarring to yep. notice that. Totally. The other thing is when he would run, he would breathe through his nose, not his mouth. So that he could just have this like frozen mm-hmm. look to be right. as, like menacing as possible. Yeah, totally menacing. And he said he studied uh, animals to understand how to move. So he tried to move like a shark and he tried to move like like apex wow. predators. Yeah. And just in the slightest parts of his movement, like, you know, again. Sneakily he, agile for yes, sure, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It's just incredible was he, what he was able to do. I, Mo, I've talked about this with some of my close movie friends, and and uh, like we all believe that Robert Patrick should have been nominated for Best Supporting Actor at the Oscars. I, that year. I, yeah. He, 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 he's like you say, menacing without saying very much. It, without, without, uh, um, without his presence in that movie, it, it doesn't work. It wouldn't work. It just doesn't. And and that's taking nothing from anybody else. But Arnold needed a a, a worthy adversary. What's the worst part of the movie, Commando? I mean, I don't know. There's Bennett. a lot. Bennett. I mean, because he's like the flabbiest villain we've but, ever but, seen. But he's like the. But, but, <laughs> I, but I'm, I'm really I'm doubling down on your point. Like Commando, I love it. It's a fun movie. Yeah. Imagine if Commando had like a, a, a an equatable villain, like yeah. someone who was actually Not there and imposing. The right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And it wasn't just that. It was like, like I, Johnny. Hey, Johnny. Yeah. If John was yeah. here, he'd laugh at this. We take a knife and cut like it's just it, it, it's just so it's not it's not real to me right. right it's no. just like it's a caricature. I still love it. I love it. Yeah, I agree with you. But again, imagine if it's like you know if Morgan Freeman was Bennett. Yeah, like anything. Yeah. Who's like not, it'd just yeah. be Kathy anybody. Bates. Oh yeah, Kathy Bates. I'm not, and I'm just saying anybody. Yeah, would have been better than yeah. Like not and then the other villains, the dad from Clueless. Like it just didn't resonate with me, you know. <laughs> Um, so Dan Hedaya, oh, I know, way. right? It's so true. He's he, he's a great actor. He is, but it was, yeah. I, I, we talked when we did it the last time I was here. I remember we talked about um, we were talking about Big. For some reason, Dan Hedaya came up that episode too. I'm trying to think I, why. I don't remember why. I don't remember oh, why. he may have been up for the, one of the parts or something. Okay, yeah. that would make sense. It doesn't matter. No, yeah, just yeah, yeah. It was no, funny. no. It's he's funny. Come, though. He's it come up twice sense. now. Do you know? Uh, it's funny. The um, so Patrick, to your point about getting the Oscar, he reprised his role as the T one thousand in, oh, in, in two other Wayne's movies. Wayne's World two and there's uh, another one. Everybody, so everybody remembers in Wayne's World two. Is it two or the first one? I don't remember. Uh now that's one, a great one of the question. Wayne's World. I think movies. it's Wayne's World um, two. No, it's the original Wayne's okay, World. The original okay. Wayne's and World. I don't know the other one. I don't. The other one is Last Action Hero. Okay, so when I don't the when, when the kids walking into the precinct in the Last Action Hero. Sharon Stone walks out smoking a cigarette because <laughs> she had just gone through the basic instinct yeah, interview yeah, process. Yeah. He turns to the right and the T-1000 walks right by him and he oh, like does fun. a double take as well. That's so cool. That one's particularly cool because Schwarzenegger's that, in it That would have well. been the Stallone Terminator 2 then, yeah, yeah. right? In that, yeah. in that world. Yeah. Right? That's right because they were swapped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you another interesting thing from an acting perspective about Terminator 2. So do you know that Linda, Linda Hamilton, who played Sarah Connor... Has a twin sister. I, I assume you know this. I think I did. Okay. Yeah, actually. <laughs> so her identical twin named Leslie w- um, was 
in the movie Terminator 2, when you see the T-1000 being Sarah Connor, that is actually Linda oh, cool. Hamilton's twin. Not as cool as this one, though. Okay. So when the T-1000 assimilates the security guard in the mental facility, yes. he becomes uh, another security guard, who, yeah. and they like look at each other. Those are also twins. But more importantly, <laughs> more importantly, Bruce, those twins are Don Stanton and Dan Stanton. Do you know what other movie they were in as twins together in the actual film? I have no do, idea. Do, I'm going to say, can I, I'll just guess big business. No. Bad guess. Gremlins 2. Okay. <laughs> they Don't were the, they, them. they were in the lab. They were the two doctors in the lab. So and those were about a year apart from okay. each other. So I, I I had to go back and look and that's fun. It, and there that's you have good it. stuff. I only have a couple more things I thought were really interesting about this movie. One of which is remember when the T one thousand passes through the bars in the prison? Yes. Uh, the and, his, gun. and his gun yeah. gets stuck to so that no Love that. the noise of Love him. the sound uh, design. So the sound oh. I think sound effects is one of the Oscars they won. They were up for a lot of special a effects lot. and sound and they Oscars. Won a four, two, I, something I can't so yeah, something like that. Sorry, I forget. No, I, I do too, but that noise of like the yeah. like, so that's actually dog food coming out of a dog can. Oh, that's hilarious. I thought that was super cool. And then there's a really cool Peter Jackson quote. Peter Jackson watched Terminator 2 and said that he better start, this is him quoted, I better start using the same technology as Cameron, otherwise we're going to get left behind as a director. I love when they uh, compliment each other through the media like that. This is one of those movies that it. there are these movies that make changes in the industry because of how good they were. Yeah. And yes. this is from a special, a special effects standpoint, you know, this is this is a change point, right? Like, and, and I think justifiably, the, I think I mentioned uh, what the budget was, but I didn't say what it actually did at the box office. So, for the whatever ninety four to one hundred million that they spent on making the film, it did five hundred and twenty million worldwide, which is still to this day the highest grossing Arnold Schwarzenegger movie of all time. Wow, that was not nineteen ninety one. Yeah. Five, so that's by, by yeah by inflation. Yeah. And okay. today, and today's inflation is two two point three trillion bajillions. Yeah. Something like so that. At least that. Yeah, yeah. something like that. Uh, all right. Any other facts or quirks or whatever before we hop over to talking about characters? Uh, Danny Cooksey plays Edward Furlong's buddy, mm -hmm. the redheaded kid. He was yeah, he, he was in a he was in different strokes in the later seasons when Mr. Drummond marries. I can't remember the actress's name. It may have been Dixie Carter or somebody like that. But um, her son is played by Danny Cooksey, so he becomes in effect Arnold and Willis's like stepbrother. Okay. Um, and also, he—I mean, I think he still acts. Uh, I think he's in his fifties, but he had a band when he was a teenager. We were in high school. This band came out called Bad for Good. It was a rock and roll band, but they're he or his dad is Danny Cooksey's dad or whomever is friends with Steve Vai, the world class guitarist. Yeah. And Steve, it was like a Steve Vai project, and he started this band, Bad for Good. Oh they, my gosh, I actually that's wild. bought—I bought their CD. It was awesome. I mean, That's they were so and they were like twelve years old at the time or something crazy. He like that. was in a. You're right though. He was in a bunch of stuff. I think he was in like a Nickelodeon show too. Probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was in. A he whole had bunch that. Of he stuff. had that. He, I mean, he had that like kid actor face for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. So you have James Cameron wrote and directed uh, Arnold uh, Schwarzenegger. Oh, I have another fact. Oh, go. Jeez. I apologize. Oh, no, don't ever. We don't apologize for I facts apologize. around here. Robert Patrick's brother, Michael Patrick, is the founder and lead singer of the band Filter. Uh, this. I love Filter. Yeah, but they had the that song in the mid '90s, "Nice Shot" that came yeah. out. Um, I love that song. They have a great album. FYI, anyone who's interested in the, like hardcore electronic rock and roll music, it's called "Title of Record." I recommend you check it out. So, "Hey Man, Nice Shot" was in some movie. It wasn't a Tarantino movie, but it was like a vampire. Like, <laughs> okay, it had dusk till dawn feel, and okay. I can't remember what the name of the movie was. Was it one of the Blade movies or yeah, something, like, something that? like that? But earlier than that, and then Filter had another song, "Take a Picture," uh, "Take a Picture," which yep. was in that's on title of record, and that was in the movie. Uh, oh God, Little Nicky, Adam Sandler's movie. It's in some other movies too. Yeah, Most it's importantly, a, it's a the Little artistic Nicky? film. I haven't actually, I've never seen it's Little Nicky. something to behold. No, I'm not above it. I just haven't seen yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's it's worth a watch. Uh, before I get any further, any other facts that you have? I think I've exhausted my facts Great for the work. Day. Yes. Great work. Great work. So Cameron wrote and directed Schwarzenegger was the Terminator. Linda, Linda Hamilton uh, and her sister Leslie Hamilton. Linda Hamilton, the physical transformation, uh, the character incredible. transformation. Um, I, and again, that's why I like I. The only thing I can compare it to is Sigourney Weaver, Alien to Aliens. I, it's funny you say that. I I had the same exact thought when I was watching this. Most I I can't think of any. I mean, and, and it is such a dramatic departure in character. I guess I would challenge you. Not even a challenge. I'd ask you, male, female, in between. 
can you think of any other character that's that made that much of a swing movie to movie in in, in, in a trilogy? Stallone in the Rocky movies, maybe, but that yeah. that's not really the same thing. Yeah. It's not apples to apples there. It's um, close though. I, I, I think Linda Hamilton probably would have been nominated for Best Actress if Sigourney Weaver had not been nominated for Best Actress for Aliens. Yeah, Is that because you know it was the it was the time of the time women just weren't taken nearly as seriously as they should have been. And yeah, it's tragic. So, um, yeah, I think that's probably what would have happened. She she was great in this. The I mean, she was so meek in the first one and, yeah. and lovable and nice, and, yeah. but then just completely tra- transformed her body and the attitude of the character. That's, it was incredible. It, it, so that's the cool. Like, so like, I think of Mark Hamill in A New Hope and I think of Mark Hamill in Return of the Jedi. Mm-hmm. And you think of this like goofy little kid, you know, in his speeder. <laughs> yeah. And then he's walking into Jabba the Hutt's castle wearing, you know, the black robe. It's yeah. like, yeah. You know, and like, but, but even within that, it's, it's Mark Hamill. There's still like you know he he's a little bit more cocksure of himself. He, he, yeah, he he's graduated from I I got to go to the Taji station yeah. to pick up more power yeah, yeah. converters. Linda to, yeah. L- Linda Hamilton is performing two different roles, and it's oh and it's, from it's movie to movie incredible yeah. to watch because you you know what she went through in the first movie and you understand you're like I get it she was institutionalized mm-hmm. and called a liar so that speaks to a lot it speaks to her performance. But also the the exposition in this movie is top notch. The way that that Cameron wrote the script to explain to get you up to speed on what Skynet was up to, to get you up to speed on uh, the motivations of all the characters, it, it was I, I it's some for for a sci fi movie. It's some of the best exposition I've ever seen. He 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 really knew what he was doing. Yeah, he had, you could. I feel like he just he, this if this movie feels like a soul project for for me. I, he just. He nails everything. In I, that, Some the, of the, we were yeah. talking about the special effects. The practical effects were good too, right? Which you know is crucial. If you you have to have good editing to make good practical sure, effects, sure. And the editing, this is superb. Yeah, I, man, it's it's almost a perfect film, but for the you know, but I'm sure we'll get to the. Oh yeah, we'll talk about the film <laughs> off in a second. But even I mean, to 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 even your point, if if going back and watching it, there the. The helicopter chase scene with the police van. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking nothing away from the entire building. You, you're while you're watching it, you're like, God, this feels like Die Hard. This feels like yeah. a weapon. Yeah, there, yeah. there's this like great yeah. feel to it. It doesn't feel overproduced. That feels very real. It feels very tangible. But that chopper shot when it's going under the viaduct mm-hmm. or under the bridge or whatever yeah, it is, yeah, yeah. there is. It just you're there. You're there watching it. And you're like that is that is that chopper did that move mm-hmm. when they're like when they're fighting each other. When he slams on the brakes and the chopper slams in the back of the truck, the the bullet wounds and the care that they take to continue the limp and have to put the pressure. The 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 guy uh, Miller or whatever his name is, it's escaping me right now. But when he's holding that weight. Which, by the way, I used to always think was a dumbbell. Remember how he's holding the thing to hit the trigger to blow up the <laughs> yeah, building? Yes, yes, yes. It, it actually... Di- you're talking about Dyson. Yeah, Dyson, yeah, not Miller. Yeah. So when Dyson's holding what looks like a dumbbell over the trigger, and he's like, I can't hold it much yeah. longer. So two things about that. One is, he is doing an incredible job. Like, just the hyperventilating and the Joe sweating. Martin, the actor, and you can see his actor. arms shaking. And, and and like then he goes from hyperventilating to like... Yeah, and stops breathing. Little, like, yeah, it's like an egg timer. <laughs> even, even more to the point, I wish I totally... When I rewatched it, I finally, for the first time in my life at 45 years old, realized what he was holding. When they originally went into, and by the way, this might be an extended scene. I don't ever remember seeing this scene before. So you know how they have an ax and they're like chopping up a bunch of crap inside to like break up yes, all the computers? Yes. There's a scene where he asks for the ax. He takes the ax. And you know the computer chip that they got out of the original T1 or 800's uh, brain? They had built a larger scale model of it. It wasn't a functional model. It was just visually the larger version of it. And he took the axe to it and he cut it in half. And it was very symbolic of like destroying it. But again, it had no practical use. It was just kind of like artwork. It is that that he's holding. Okay. It's one piece of that thing that he broke that he's holding. Okay. And I'm just like, I, that can't be accidental that, no, he, no. that he's yeah. doing that. I and mean, I just love those little details. Ensures right? the destruction of it further. I, yeah. yeah, no, that, that yeah, that's a good detail. I'd be interested to see if it was actually in an extended scene or deleted scene. Um, but it doesn't matter. It's still cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's, yeah. it's been a long time since I've seen the movie start to end. And on the platform I watched it, I think I got the extended scenes, which we'll talk in a minute about the one extended scene that I wish I could unsee. <laughs> so um, be- quickly, just going back to the other actors and actresses, we already talked about uh, Robert Patrick, who's the T-1000, Edward Furlong, John uh, John Connor. Um, the 
Earl Bowen, who plays Dr. Silberman, <laughs> I, I love him. Yeah. He's and, and he makes appearances throughout He's all these films. Least, yeah. I, know that. I think yeah. he makes another appearance in the other one as well. But the, the it, when I say these are all like different films, I feel like the whole psych ward when he licks her face. Oh, is there ever a better time when you see somebody's face get bro- nose get broken than that guy? Right, man? But, oh. but like, and, and then there's like, and then I'm starting to think, I'm like, was this a tip of the hat in Kill Bill? It, it I a totally different story. But remember when she is uh, yeah. uh, the and like yeah. there's the feel of the scene totally is so similar. I always, I've always thought that. Yeah, yeah, it, not necessarily an homage, but just it was influenced yeah. for sure. And, yeah, and you that. and then you and you look at it and you're like, the the most incredible thing is when you have a scene that on paper would read as gratuitous, but in the film almost feels necessary. Yeah, like it's like you you if you're gonna buy into the fact yeah. that Sarah Connor has completely given up on mankind. It's that kind of stuff compounded with everything that she knows. It's not just that she knows the world's coming to an end, but it's that what world is she even saving? The one where she's being licked by right. some orderly. <laughs> no, like, it's, a good I, point. I, it's just a great way to yeah. tie that and point it's, together. And it's also it's also a good way to just to set up her first uh, plan of action. You know, she's got to she's got to take control somehow. So Dude, why not just beat so, that guy? Why not why not just break that guy's nose with a mop? Who, who are you taking to fight, Sarah Connor or Ripley? I, that's a good question. That's a Another great show. Question. That's so for that's another a, show. That's an after hour show, if you know what I mean. I don't. I I don't either. But you can imagine <laughs> that Veronica no, <laughs> Uh We talked about the Stanton brothers, the two security guards. Uh, this is another awesome one for me because I just love seeing similar actresses kind mm-hmm. of pop up in different places. So John Connor's foster mother is um, Jeanette Goldstein. Do you know okay. who Jeanette Goldstein is? I don't. She is, my friend, Private Vasquez from Aliens. Oh, no kidding? She is also Megan Shapiro. Which your is your cr- aunt. My aunt. Yeah. Uh, Mo's aunt. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Megan Shapiro from Lethal Weapon 2. In Lethal Weapon 2, do you remember how Riggs and Murtaugh have all of their cop friends that systematically get murdered? Oh, yeah. She's, she is oh, the diving totally. board one that gets totally. murdered in that. Yeah. Totally. Yes, I, I do now recognize her from there. Um, Xander Berkeley plays the foster dad. I know yeah, that. Yeah, and he's yeah. just he's one of those uh, character actor extraordinaires. Yeah. Uh, he's in everything. Yeah. Everything. He's a few good men. So um, she uh I so I, many things. I looked her up, uh, Jeanette, because I wanted to see if I could get her on the show because she's in so many eighties movies. Right, right. So she um I don't even know how to say this without sounding like a creep, so I'll just do my best. She is a <laughs> she is a a full woman, if you will. And she has her own line of bras for full women. Really? And I'm like, well, if there was ever a guest that I was meant to have on the show, no apparently doubt. that was it. But that's her. Yeah. I should find out. Any, what it is are you still it. pursuing that? Or? No, I, I spent a little too much time on her website and felt kind of dirty. So oh. I just stopped doing Fair it. Enough. I should probably Fair check enough. back out on that. Um, so with all that being said, those are the characters. I want to hop to what I know you want to talk about, which is, I think, important to the movie. There are certain parts of the movie. I don't like to nitpick movies that I think are damn near close to perfect. They they flirted a little bit with Campy. I don't think they went there, but they flirted. Like at the beginning of the movie, so uh, someone had gone to Cameron and said, hey, listen, when the camera cuts to the Terminator after he gets the jacket and the pants and the glasses, let's let's cue up the music bad to the bone. Oh, he that was that was not, well. So it was not originally uh, Cameron's idea, and Cameron said, "No, we're not doing that." I wish he would have. Well, hold on, stuck to his hold guy. on. A year later, they're in uh, they're in post, and he says, "You know, I think we should." And he reiterates the idea as if it was his. And the guy's like, "That was my idea." He goes, "I don't remember you saying that." He Shapiroed them. I've Shapiroed them big time. Wow, <laughs> you piece of work. You got some nerve. <laughs> <laughs> there aren't. I think in large part. This is, it's so tough to nitpick this. This is the difference between one of the best movies ever and movie perfection. The term, the first Terminator had nothing like that. The first Terminator was like, there, there, like there was nothing campy, but the second Terminator is a great movie, but they do flirt with some of that stuff. The, the I, I don't mind the hasta la vista, the, the, oh, the hasta make, la vista, I love that, that. stuff that so, like don't kill. So this is what, fr- this is what frustrates me. Top is, 100 quotes. Yeah. And this is what frustrates me is they did such a good job. Like when he's shooting them in the leg and he's like, you told me not to kill them. Yeah, that rem- live. It's consistent. It's consistent. Okay. But every once in a while, it just borders on campy. And like that to me is the thumbs up at the well, end of the movie. The thumbs up at the end of the movie, bad to the bone. And then also I need a vacation. I could yeah. have done without, but yeah. it doesn't kill me. No. But the thumbs up. I, so listen, I don't, you just did a beautiful setup and I don't want to step on your toes. And I totally agree with you. But as I was recently watching it, 
man, that the but what happens right after that? Right, his lights go out. Right, and then I, I just I'm just like, oh man, is that what it's like to die? Like yeah. it kind of gives me this creepy feeling. So it's almost as if like I forget about the camp because he went so dark right yeah. after. But I like I said, I'm not stepping on your toes. Point is well taken. No, I, I, it's not. It doesn't hurt the movie. I, no, I, uh, this no. is me. This is me saying like. No. You know, I'd like my filet mignon just a little cooked, a little more cooked than that, you know, or a little more raw. I mean, you're nitpicking what otherwise is an incredible meal. Exactly. I just sometimes. Sometimes. But now. He can't help himself. The better example of that is the extended version of this movie at the end is a you see a grandmother, a Sarah, a Linda Hamilton aged into her 80s sitting on this a park is, bench. This is in the extended, extended version. Extended version. Yeah. yeah. Because you, you just watch it, right? You didn't see this at the end. N- no, I'm, no, no, no. Uh, I, yeah. I, to, well, I was actually just quick. I was, I was watching the extended version because my Blu-ray that I have actually offers that. And uh, I, I, once the 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 Reese flashback, I was like, I'm, a, I can't do it. I just, yeah. and I, I but they, but they, but just, they, 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 they did a the great mood. job. They cut. I mean, this is what this is what cutting is. They cut a bunch of stuff out. Yeah. They say this doesn't work. I had never seen. I didn't realize I was watching the extended version when I rewatch this. The very end of the movie, I'm like, I was waiting just to hear the voiceover and the and. I'm going to read it to you when we're going to talk about it because I think you, I think you've accurately said it's the chef kiss of the film. It explains the film, right? It is the heart of the film. Uh, if a machine can learn the value of human life, maybe we can too. Yeah, I, I, the 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 film is is prescient or prescient, whatever the pronunciation is, uh, on its on its own without with. <laughs> it's it's it, it it foretells a lot and without that quotation, but that. Like you say, chef kiss. It 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 it, may, it brings it all home. And the it, extended it, version takes that quote and takes a dump on it and buries it. Under oh, the you're kidding me! It's not. It doesn't do that in the sense that it changes the the lesson. It just hard. It doesn't spoon feed you. It it opens your mouth and jams the food down your throat. Oh man! So so Linda or Sarah Connor, it, you could get, end of the movie cuts to Sarah Connor. Sarah Connor sitting on a bench, holding what looks like uh, possibly like a recorder. And the narration that she's been doing throughout the entire movie, as it turns out, is like her life story. It's not it doesn't say she's going to write a book, but she like concludes. Right. And as she's saying it, she's like, what, uh, you know, what once we thought of as being a war on the field. Was she Stephen Baldwin all of a sudden? Yes. Is that the voice you're doing? Yes. Okay. No, she's Bane from Batman. Uh, I was born (laughs) in the darkness. She. (laughs) I love how you just you crowbar in the all I the impersonations it. I, you can no, do. It's my no. favorite. It's also it's not because first of all I can do quite <laughs> a few. What if it was Big Bird? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. waka waka waka. <laughs> so no, but um, she she's giving this narration, and then she start and so she is sitting on a park bench, and then you see John Connor. At the beginning of the movie, you see adult John Connor. Um, in the flashback of mm-hmm. like everything, it's him, adult John Connor. Except instead of on the field with you know guns, he's on a playground. It wasn't his, like a his, young Clooney or anything. No, okay. no, with was, his young with his young right. daughter who's playing, and Sarah Connor saying, and now instead of fighting the war in the field, we fight, we fight on the floors of the oh. white of the of the of the Floor. Senate, and oh. it, and then the the pullback shot is that this playground, the backdrop of the playground is like the Senate. Or like the White House, White House or like or something Capitol like that. Or something. Yeah, oh yeah. my god! And I'm like, dear God, like this, is, and and like that's. I'm, I mean, they didn't put it in the movie, but you don't have to. You do such a good job. Less is more when it comes to these kind of movies. You don't need to sit me down and explain what the lesson is. You're you, the thumbs up is okay, but the point that you made that I agree with is when that screen shuts. It, the, the, you don't have to explain. You don't have to have something that comes up and says, you are about to die. Your screen is about to shut. It's the it's the oh, closing of it, it when he goes in there. Oh, it's fantastic. It, it, it kills me. It yeah. ke- it's just like, it's so final. Yeah. It's like, oh, oh, love it. Is that what it's like? Yeah. Is that what it's like? It's wild. Yeah, it's, it's wild. Absolutely wild. It's wild. It's absolutely wild. Which, yeah, anyway, um, I'm glad they dropped that because yeah. uh, that, you know, I wonder if, I sometimes wonder if directors film those be, just because for their own satisfaction they're like i just need to know i need to have it in case yeah. i need to wrap it up just uh, tightly in a bow i think it's natural to overtell a story i think most writers overtell stories and then when they actually look yeah. at it they're like oh you know what this doesn't require me having to explain it it's implied you know the the most famous version of this that actually made in the movie is, is uh, the movie psycho 1960 i believe uh where the psychiatrist at the end basically comes out and it's like a, it's long. It's like three minutes of him explaining exactly what's wrong with Norman Bates and right. why he did what he did. And right. it's just you know it it doesn't like it doesn't hurt the movie. It's still a masterpiece. But yeah, it, it would have been so cool yeah. if it just 
Wow. I don't want to spoil the movie, but um, anyway, it would have been cool if they just ended right before yeah. that. Just before that, it would yeah, have yeah. been fun. No, totally, totally. Uh, Max, this, or Max, man, it's, okay. it's the second time. It's okay, Laura. Brew. <laughs> Brew. Um, this covers everything I've got to cover. I am ready to go to our next spot. Are you good, or you got anything else you want to throw in there? Hmm. Well, I I said it was prescient earlier, and that's because it, it does... It, <laughs> You look at the you look at how we're mired in tech today, and I know you're probably smiling right now. <laughs> oh man, thinking I'm going to go are on all, some are rant. all the batteries charged on the video because <laughs> this is going to be a long episode. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. Let me just get my tinfoil hat on so the CIA is not listening. Uh, we didn't land on the moon. Oh dear, no, I'm God. Kidding, that's not me. That was a joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but Cameron is basically suggesting don't get too reliant on tech. That's the message of this movie. Tech is great, but use it. Be smart with it. Don't don't just make it a crutch. That's what this movie's really about. You, agen- and you agenda pushing son of a son of agenda pusher. I, know, I, know. I I think tech's wonderful. Look what we're doing right now. We're talking to nobody, but soon we'll be talking to millions or whatever your fanship is. It's okay. Now, Bill- billions, is, please, billions. Listenership, it's okay, yeah. as it were. It's billions. Billions. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's not billions. That's incredible. But I like that you thought it could have been. Hey, I believe you. I got a bridge. Leave everything you say. That's good. Um, Listen, it's okay to have tech. Tech is good. Tech is great. We need it. It helps advance humankind. It's wonderful. But just don't get too attached because bad things might happen. Not not necessarily and hopefully to the extent of nuclear war or whatever. Cyberdyne. Yeah. 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 But our machines fighting back. But that's, that was self-aware. always a metaphor. That was always a metaphor. We're the closest we've ever been to this movie being true right now with AI. Yes. I, uh, it's getting quite frightening. I love it. I know. I'm I think ready. it's great. I'm no, cause I, I think the things that it, it offers. Yeah. It's, and it's, I've, it's, I've probably already benefited from yeah. something AI has done, but I'd I, love to take I'm AI not... and have it watch the movie Terminator, watch the whole like, thing and be like, what are your thoughts on <laughs> that's this? That's how I like my irony served. Yeah. Well. Yeah. With a, Cold, cold laser to that. No, I mean, I, I. It's not an unfair point. I don't think. I think the primary lesson. I, I think that is true. I think that the primary story that's trying to be told here is one of perseverance. So perseverance is going to take on a different form, whether it's a single mother, whether it's you know post saving the world from a post apocalyptic situation. It is this relationship and that the the engagement like i th- i thought it was fascinating there's two speeches that resonate resonate with me from like a parenting perspective that i just find fascinating one is as she's watching the terminator play with john connor and she's saying all these men i've dated my entire life all these people i've tried to introduce he'll never hit him he'll always be there for him like this description of of being a good father and that this robot fit the bill more right. than anyone else is, yeah. is fascinating. Totally. The other speech is in fight club when they're talking about, I don't know if a generation raised by women needs another, woman. needs another. Yeah. If that's yeah. The, and I just, I find those two narratives to be very fascinating. So I, I, but, other, but I, but I get what you're saying. Too. There's that's part, there well, too. The, no, no. And I think that ties into what I'm talking about, but even to underline your point a little further, the um, there's a moment where after the first battle, you know, we got to talk about, we'll talk about what precedes the scene I'm about to describe in a second. But when they get away from the T-1000, they're driving away in that car, and she reaches back to the back seat, and John thinks she's going to hug him. Yeah. But she's just checking, checking the bullet, for bullet holes, holes, and then she yeah. chastises him or admonishes him for not, wh- why did you make that decision to come save me? I yeah. can take care of myself. You're too important. You can't do that. And he's devastated. He starts crying, and that we get the, why, what's wrong with your eyes? What's, what's happening with your eyes? <laughs> What's wrong with your eyes? <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm going to ask you some questions. Who is your daddy? And what does he do? It's not a tumor. So later on, we then get mom telling John, "We, I love you. I've always loved yeah, you. Yeah. You need to know this. Mm. And it, 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 it in that one little tiny minor arc or sub arc, if you will, it's showing how we can improve on communication even if we are embedded in all this tech. Even and if the emotion is there, the relaying of the emotion hard. can be it could be hard. It's yeah. Hard. yeah. And you got we all have to improve on that. I think he's I mean, we've blown it. We blew it. We yeah, blew it, Mo. We blew it. We blew uh, it. You blew it. I've not blown it. <laughs> I, I, you, you for sure blew it. <laughs> but anyway, back to the action. <laughs> there the scene that leads up to the uh hugging, not hugging scene is when they 
fling her from the insane asylum, yeah, yeah. or for lack of a better term, I think that's what it's referred to or whatever. That's yeah. what John... The nut house. Yeah, that's what he, he says to his buddy um, earlier in the movie. And the man, the T-1000 gets there first, and then John, Sarah, and and Arnold all arrive, and the the, the stakes are well known at this point. We've already had the showdown of the two Terminators earlier in the mall, mm-hmm. which was epic. The mall scene's amazing. It's, so, it's, yeah. a, it's like a Western showdown. Yeah, it's yeah. incredible. And so the consequences are built personally. The consequences are built you know, on a macro level with the, with the whole movie's going, what, what's happening in the entire movie. And they have to get out of this pl- this place where the, the staff of the hospital wants to keep Sarah there. And now this killer Terminator wants to kill her. So it's like she's got to bust through layers of the story just to get out of this yeah, place, yeah. let alone just practically what she has to do. And then he's driving backwards in that car down the ramp. It's just incredible. Yeah, it's yeah. one of the best... 30 minutes of film in any it's movie great. ever, it's ever, great. ever, ever. Yeah, I totally agree. It's fantastic. Uh, Bruce, outstanding job talking about Terminator 2. We are now going to go to the part of the show where we hear from one of our fans. It's called the Buzz in the Tower Fan Spotlight. Awesome. Bruce, today's Buzz in the Tower Fan Spotlight is none other than Raul. He is a huge fan of the show. We've had him on for the Carl Weathers episode where we did like a tribute to Carl Weathers. The guy's a huge fan. He's also very knowledgeable. I am incredibly curious to see what he had to say about Terminator 2 because it's an incredible movie. I'm back on this podcast. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me back again. So excited. You guys called me for Terminator 2. Oh, man. Where do I begin with this movie? This movie is like one of my favorites. And like I feel like it's one of the best sequels out there. Compared to its original work, and be like, you have the original where it's like freaking amazing, and then you have the sequel which just blows it away. Terminator 2 was that movie for me. Yeah, man, this movie has so many good parts in it, it's hard to pick just one. But my overall thought about this movie is just insane, dude. Just (laughs) insane. It's great. Visual effects for its time, the effects were great. You know, Stan Winston, who did all the puppetry, which is amazing. You don't get to see that kind of thing anymore. You know, but my favorite part, I lied to you not, my favorite part had to be when the T-800 and John Connor uh, went to stop Sarah at Dyson's house, Bennett, that movie's used, that name's used a lot in these Schwarzenegger movies, (laughs) but, and like John throws him the knife, he's like, show him who we are, and then like, he cuts his arm and he pulls it off and then. You just see the robotic hand, and you sit there thinking, it's like, how did he do that? It looks so real. And I spent so many times watching this movie, and I can't find where the the puppetry starts and where the where it ends. It's just like, it's because it blends in so well. Like I said, you don't see movies like that anymore. But um, that had to be my favorite scene. We just, so cool. Hey, guys, man. But thanks for having me back. That's my favorite scene. I'm just glad to be back again, you know. Guys are doing an awesome job on this podcast, so take it easy. Are you guys? Raul nailed it, and I completely forgot about the Stan Winston stuff because you know yeah, he's he's Predator, he's Alien, he's had his hand in and everything. Yeah, he's the best. Um, and and he's right. We didn't talk about that scene. I mean, that is uh, infamous El Guapo scene well, where it, they rip it, the arm off. It, it and it, it it makes the uh, the Bennett or Dyson's believe like yeah. Okay, you could see how they'll just buy into whatever they're selling after. Oh well, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's oh, the world, it, yeah. I, I, we can stop the world ending. I'm in. Let's yeah, go. Yeah. Let's go do it. Yeah. God, that is a, I, You know, it's funny. I don't talk about that scene very often. That's an intense scene. Yeah. Because yeah. like uh, and, the, the humanity of it all, and the like. Yeah. yeah. John um, escorts the their young son. They go, Show Come me with your me, bedroom. buddy. Yeah, Show yeah. me your bedroom. Yeah. It, 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 the whole thing is just very adult. It's, yeah. It's really well handled. Yeah. yeah. No, it's great. Uh, Raul, thank you again for being our spotlight. You did an outstanding job. With that in mind, a couple reminders. Please rate, review, subscribe, follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever podcast player you listen to, we're on it. Also, you can check us out on any social media platform at Buzz in the Tower, B U Z Z on the Tower, where you can check out amazing content. Buzzinthetower.com is the website uh, where you can pick up officially licensed merchandise. YouTube.com slash at Buzz in the Tower is our YouTube channel. That's an amazing place to check out the face with the voice of Bruce, the Bruce Moose. Bruce, what were we talking about? Talking about Terminator 2. Terminator right? 2, yes. Yeah. Sorry. Terminator yeah. R2 Spinner. Uh, and what am I forgetting? Let's see. What Patreon.com slash Buzz in the Tower. 
Can I get that graphic up with the arms? Yep. 80stees.com, our sponsor. Please make sure you buy a shirt or three or 12 or 20. And with that being said, uh, we don't have a topic yet for Wednesday. We will debate that after the show. Concluding thoughts on Terminator 2 or just a shout out yeah, to uh, anybody, I, so any of the ladies out there? Just real quick. I mean, there's yeah, there's no, a lot we could have. ladies? I have, hey, ladies. I have no ladies. Okay. No. Well, look at that. Listeners, we've got ourselves a single gent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You'll want to hop aboard this train wreck. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that before. That's really funny. Hop aboard this train wreck. Um, oh, that's good. I, you'll see I'm wearing a Guns N' Roses t-shirt. Uh, I did that sort oh. of on purpose. Um, Shame on back me. Back in 1991, it was a big cultural thing going on. Uh, grunge music was sort of uh, discovered widely in the in the country, but hair metal and, and the likes of Guns N' Roses still had their thing. Now, the song You Could Be Mine was on the Terminator 2 soundtrack, Mo. And the video for that song preceded the release of the movie, as I recall. I could be wrong on that, but I remember... F- Watching the video, and they showed clips from the movie yeah, yeah. in the uh, juxtaposed, my, my word, I like that to word. a performance by the band. Um, and they showed a lot of clips from the movie, and it just, it was almost, it served as like a huge bit of marketing for everybody to want to go see it. I was so excited just because of the music video. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was going to see it anyway, yeah. but I was, the, the music video is what, uh, for Guns N' Roses' song, You Could Be Mine Now. I think a couple few months after the release of that song, and then the movie Guns N' Roses releases their double Use Your Illusion one and two albums. It was a big summer. It was a big summer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nirvana's Nevermind comes out. Pearl Jam's 10 comes out. I think those are more late summer, early fall, but nonetheless, it was, there was a lot going on pop culture wise. And this movie was right in the middle of it. So, and I was third, I just turned 13. You were 12. I was. And, it was it was it was epic. It was like the best time. Oh, wow. to, That's a big summer. It's the best time to, to be a kid oh having gosh. a summer vacation. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I, we got lucky. Who, who's the uh, Who's the actor in the in the Batman Begins uh, Dark Knight who plays Batman? I can't think of his name right now. Christian Bale. Do you remember the Terminator movie with Christian Bale? Was it Salvation? Yes, I S- believe so. The fourth one was it? I was guess. it Terminator yeah. Salvation? He plays John Connor. John Connor. Yeah, he plays yeah, John Connor. Yeah. I, I really liked that, by the way. I thought it was a good movie. The best part of that movie is there's a scene where he's got to draw the attention of the patrol droids or whatever. So he finds like an old boom box, like because everything's this desolate wasteland. And he like ties it to like some motorcycle and it plays You Could Be Mine. Oh, wow. And I, I was like, it was, such, that, oh, it was so, such a cool yeah. throwback. It just made me think That's of it really when you cool. said that. It was a very I cool I didn't know throwback. that. That's yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah. Bruce, excellent job. That concludes the show and we will see you all soon. See you very soon. soon. Good to be here. Thanks, soon. guys. Soon.